Shaolin Kung Fu. Fake. Wing Chun, the best. Kickboxing, trash. Or is it? I'm gonna make the video now that's gonna make me no friends and I could use friends. Kickboxing, trash. 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 Kickboxing, no. We're going to divide each martial art into three categories. Aesthetic. You like what you like. You think what? Maybe you think something. You think maybe maybe that you can you be anything. anything. <laughs> I'm just going to talk about what I think is beautiful. Then fitness. How exhausting is a typical training session? Now, very important. You can start an Aikido class by sprinting 10 kilometers and doing a thousand push-ups. But is that how your normal, usual Aikido class begins? We're talking about how exhausting is it to put the skills of the martial art into practice? How exhausting is an average training session? Effectiveness is complicated because we can talk about two different kinds. Effectiveness in competitive combat sports, like in the UFC, or we can talk effectiveness in a dangerous real world self defense situation. And there's a slight but significant difference right there. For example, in a MMA competition, you're unlikely to be able to grab onto your opponent's hands. In a self-defense situation, when your opponent isn't completely committed to attacking you yet, and maybe they're not trained, and they're sort of walking towards you, shoving you, then grabbing is absolutely an option. Or in MMA, not everything is allowed, but on the streets, it's all allowed. So there are some differences there. I'm talking about real world self-defense. And in the end, we put all the values together, we average them out, and then we put them on the tier list. So in this list, when there's a martial art that does doesn't maybe rank very well in terms of aesthetics, but you don't care about that. Just forget about it. Okay, here we go. Bravo six. six. Going dark. Now let's begin with Aikido. I think Aikido aesthetically is not very pleasing. It looks cool when all Japanese men in traditional clothing do it. The move itself is not beautiful. It's not supposed to be, and that's fine. On the aesthetic scale, four out of 10. Okay, number two. Fitness. When I did some Aikido classes, I didn't break a sweat. Nobody did. It's not an exhausting martial art. The only thing that gets exhausting a little bit is when you do the rolls, but the rolls are not really part of the martial art itself. It's what you do in order to not get hurt. You wanna get fit? Don't choose Aikido. Two out of 10. Third, effectiveness. Aikido is not horrible. I'm not a hater of Aikido. Aikido can help you if you use it preemptively before a fight gets started. A lot of fights, they start by people shoving you around or people walking up to you. And if you strike beforehand, there are things in Aikido that are not bad. Four out of 10. Average. <laughs> 3.3. Next up, Wing Chun. Very popular. I love the Ip Man movies. It's, it's an old fashioned, fashioned movie star. I did Wing Chun for about two years and met a couple of Wing Chun masters in Shaolin. I have a bit of a love-hate relationship with this martial art. I think there are aspects of it, like with most martial arts that are really, really cool. But now, aesthetic. I think Wing Chun looks good. There's a reason why why the Ip Man movies are so popular, why it lends itself to beautiful fight scenes. It has straight, direct movements that can look incredibly aesthetic and nice. Seven out of 10. Now fitness. Wing Chun classes are not great for fitness. You don't move around that much, which is the point. The movements are very direct. It's supposed to be efficient. The only time when you kind of maybe have to catch your breath is when your master's making you do the chain punches. But generally you barely have kicks, only low kicks. You spend a lot of time doing repetitions of, you know, certain uh, Tan Shou, whatever Shou, Han Zhao, Fin Zhao, Fak Zhao. Three out of 10. Now, effect Effectiveness, ooh, I believe Wing Chun is even less effective than Aikido when it comes to real fights. A chain punch might help you when you're in a bar and someone's drunk and you just overwhelm them and they fall to the floor. Wing Chun very often doesn't teach you how to properly guard. It doesn't teach you how to block. It doesn't even really teach you how to throw a proper punch. Now, if you are a two meter tall, 150 kilo dude and you do Wing Chun and you really mess someone up once, it's probably because one punch from you would knock anybody out. It's not necessarily Wing Chun. Generally, any martial art that doesn't let you spar or put you in some type of situation that emulates a real world fight can't be very effective. Sorry, Wing Chun, three out of 10. That averages out to a 4.3. Karate, karate. I don't know how to say it properly. I love karate. I think it's a classic, it's cool. And in terms of aesthetic, it is very nice looking. The forms are nice. People tend to be very stiff, but I prefer people be stiff than to be soft. The movements have to be very clean. I really do appreciate karate and I love the way it looks when I look at the competitions. Aesthetic, eight out of 10. Now fitness, karate is exhausting. Forms are always exhausting. If you do one form from beginning to end with proper power, you are out of breath for 10 minutes. I'm exaggerating, but it, it is kind of like that. Karate is a very diverse martial art, so it includes a lot of things. Arm training, leg training, have a flexible hip. All of these things are very important. Karate is an exhausting and tiring martial art. Great for keeping fit. Seven out of 10. Now effectiveness. Some people also do the 1v1 fights, although they have some rules there that make it very far removed from an actual situation. So it's not that great. So I would say karate, it's like 3.6 Röntgen. Not okay, great or terrible. terrible. Five out of 10. Which makes it a total of 6.7. Okay, now to the next one, Elden Ring, wow. aesthetics 10, you fitness 10, it. effectiveness 100. I just made a review for Elden Ring with some epic Kung Fu in it. Check it out on the second channel. It's good fun and I work hard on it. 
get back to the video. Take one dough. This is the martial art that I have the least experience with on this whole list. I can only judge it from what I've seen. And I know that Taekwondo also is mostly leg focused, which is very reminiscent of Shaolin Kung Fu. If I look at these uh, Taekwondo presentations and being able to do cool kicks and cool jumps and being flexible, I find very aesthetically pleasing. Seven out of 10. Fitness, leg training is always the most exhausting part. Kicks are exhausting. When I look at Taekwondo training, I think this is pretty rough. Like I said, many exercises remind me of Shaolin. So I would say in terms of fitness, it's an eight out of 10. But you can correct me if I'm wrong, I don't know that much about Taekwondo. And effectiveness, when you are in a real world situation, kicking is not ideal because you're nervous, you're on slippery ground, you throw a kick, you slip and you fall and you don't want to be on the ground. Now, when you're a Taekwondo master, ideally you're super good with kicks, so that will not happen to you. But if someone came to me and said, hey, I want to be able to defend myself, I wouldn't tell them, learn Taekwondo and you'll be able to throw the craziest kicks. Sure you will be, but it's not the first thing I'd recommend. And also oftentimes self-defense situations start very close to each other. People get in your face and you first have to create the distance before you can kick. So uh, self-defense, hmm, I would give it a five out of 10, which averages just as karate on a 6.7. Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Now again, this is a, a martial art on the rise. Aesthetically, no offense. You're rolling around with the other person on the ground. I don't find it very aesthetically pleasing. It's not, it's not the way I roll, uh, but don't forget Get by aesthetically pleasing, I don't mean that you see someone execute a move really well and then you think, wow. wow, beautifully done. I get that. I'm talking about if you show it to someone who's uninitiated, how do you present this martial art? Does it look nice? In my eyes, not really. It's not supposed to, right? We're getting to that. Two out of 10. Now fitness, BJJ is amazing. Wrestling with someone on the ground and trying to get the better of them and to control them is one of the most exhausting things you can do. I love it. It's fun. I think it's great for fitness and uh, I give it a 9 out of 10. Effectiveness, no surprise here. There's a statistic about what percentage of fights end up on the ground. Most of them do. So BGG BG, BG is absolutely crucial. Effectiveness, 10 out of 10. That averages out on a 7 out of 10. Now judo. Oh, the age old question. What's better, BJJ or judo? Ooh, what's better? What's What's better? Aesthetically, I find Judo a bit nicer than BJJ. The throws are cool, legs are flying through the sky. It's a bit more bombastic, imposing than BJJ. Not by a lot, but a little bit. Six out of 10. Now fitness. I did two years of judo when I was a teenager and judo classes were not very exhausting, unfortunately. The classes really just consist of finding a partner and then practicing the throws. In BJJ, you have the entire weight of your opponent on top of you. And that's just a bit rarer in judo. In judo, you're mostly on your feet and you throw. It's all right, six out of 10. Now effectiveness. Although most fights end up on the ground, almost all fights start on your feet. I think judo is just as crucial as BJJ. When I started judo as a teenager, after a while, I thought it was so boring because I wanted to know how to punch. And I didn't back then understand that in a lot of real fights, there's not much punching. There's a lot of grabbing hold of each other and throwing each other. And one proper judo throw and the person lands with their head on, or their feet on the ground or their hip, the fight is over. Judo is amazing for self-defense, 10 out of 10, which averages out on a 7.3. Kickboxing. I love kickboxing. It's one of my favorites, but let's be honest. Let's be fair in the ratings. Now, aesthetically, kickboxing, I think is rather uninteresting. It's cool and I like to see it when someone's able to throw a good kick and to throw a good punch, but I don't find it super beautiful. You're not gonna put someone on stage and say, yo, shadow box. Wow, amazing, that's so beautiful. Not really. So aesthetically, three out of 10. Now fitness. Kickboxing training consists mostly of doing shadow boxing, doing drills, working on the bag. I think it's really one of the best things you can do if you wanna stay fit. You train your legs, you train your arms, your entire body basically. And every kickboxing class that I've been to consists of really going all out and going crazy. 10 out of 10. Effectiveness, I don't think this is a big surprise to you. Sparring is key and that's where it's at. There is no two ways about it. 10 out of 10, which averages at a 7. Wow. And now the last one, Shaolin Kung Fu. The one that I am, oh, I'm so good at it. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Fitness, 10. Aesthetic, 10. Effectiveness, 10. Average, 10. It's over. I'm just kidding. Let's be real. Shaolin Kung Fu is complicated in the things that it encompasses. I cannot rate Shaolin Kung Fu because Shaolin Kung Fu is MMA, but I don't want to make this too difficult and over intellectualize this. I'm going to narrow Shaolin Kung Fu down to what most people associate with it. By that, I mean acrobatics and forms and being able to break stuff with your hands. That is not all of it, but that's fair. So that's what we're gonna focus on now. Aesthetically, 
I gotta be honest with you guys, Shaolin Kung Fu is the most beautiful thing a human being can do. Look at some animal forms, look at some forms. Of course I'm biased, but hey, can't help it. 10 out of 10. Fitness. Shaolin Kung Fu, just like Taekwondo, focuses on the legs, but you add your arms to it and you have stances that are even lower. Shaolin are mostly northern styles, so leg focused exercises. Mabu, Pubu, all this kind of stuff. Plus, when you do jumps and acrobatics, frog jumps, this is just the most exhausting martial art that I have ever practiced. Shaolin Kung Fu, in terms of fitness, is a 10 out of 10. Effectiveness. We are talking forms, acrobatics, and breaking stuff with your hands and your head. To all the people who love the Shaolin Kung Fu, if this is what we think of, then we have to be real. The overwhelming amount of Shaolin Kung Fu classes do not include sparring, do not include China, do not include Shuai Jiao, removing all of the parts that make it an effective martial art. So forms by themselves are not going to help you much. Breaking stuff with your hands is not going to help you that much. Being able to do a backflip is not going to help you much. The effectiveness of what people typically associate with Shaolin Kung Fu is a 3 out of 10, which leads to a total of 7.7. .7. Now, let's put these on the final tier list. Let's see where they rank, shall we? D-rank. Standing for D's is not great. Aikido. Now, C for can you do better? That's Wing Chun. Now, B for pretty good. This is Taekwondo and Karate. A for amazing BJJ. Then S ranking for superb Judo. And SS ranking for sweet and sour to, to go is Shaolin Kung Fu and Chikbo. Tell me in the comment section how you hate me and how wrong I am and that I'm the worst person ever. Uh, I don't mean to offend anyone. This is how I see it. Ask me again in five years and I probably see it differently. If you enjoy what you train, keep training it. A few weeks ago, I reacted to some fake martial arts. Check out that video and I'll see you in the next one. Antonio out.